Hello and welcome to another episode of Quasi's Corner with me, Quasi. Today, we will be talking about different ideas for tuning and dampening techniques that will improve your sound. Up next. Okay, let's talk about dampening first. There are five points I want to touch on. Obviously, there are various other methods of dampening that we uh, we would suggest and that we have done. Um, if you look down our video list, there's a whole video on that. If you if you put that in, search that, all these methods uh, apply a different level of dampening to your snare, depending on the size, shape, and weight of that particular item. What's used on this particular video is is a Yamaha Absolute Custom snare with an ambassador on it. So what does dampening do? Dampening is basically the act of putting something on the snare in order to limit or annihilate any uh, sustain that would be on the snare itself. I'm going to give you a brief like rundown of, of the ones that are available so you can have a bit more of an understanding of what to put on your snares. My personal favorite is comes in form of this. This is the drum clip. Um, this is the bass drum drum clip, actually. It just goes on your bass drum, but I have no need for a bass drum drum clip because I already have muffling on my bass drum in form of the e -mats. I have also a snare version. There are two levels of snare version for this drum clip. Um, there's a small one which affords you uh, a, kind of like a sm uh, lesser amount of dampening, and there's this one which afford you a bit more dampening um, and it comes with not just the clip it's a very simple design it's literally a drum clip clips the side of the snare back and it has two different uh, kind of uh, surfaces with adhesive on the other side I basically used uh, the felt on the first layer and on the second layer I used the neoprene bit that they had and just stuck it on the felt and then stuck it on because it it grips <laughs> It fits on very nicely. Obviously, if you fiddle with it a lot, take it on, take it off, eventually it's gonna get a little weak, so. Um, that's over time, though. But if you just leave it on there, it does what it do. I've, I've got it on almost every snare that I own. If I need to, like I said, I could take it off, but, you know, I like experimenting with sounds, etc. I like experimenting with the level of dampening. These ones right here, they give you that maximum level of dampening, and, uh, I've had no complaints. Everybody asks me about, oh, how do you dampen your snare like that? You've got the right amount of crack and you don't have that. That's my favorite one. If I wanted that total kind of sound, I would tend to use, if I have this kind of head on a one ply head, I would tend to use uh, either a wallet or I would use um, the big fat snare drum. We haven't played it on this video, demoed it on this video, but you can do that with that. Slap cats, you've got the drum dots, similar formula, but not the same. Drum honey, similar formula, but not the same. The moon gels, which come in two, three different colors, similar formula, not the same. So obviously, depending on how you place those around your drum, you'll get a certain level of dampening or not. You can have that total dampening when certain places, etc., etc. Um, and these, the, all of them, from the slap cats to the honey, to the moon gel, to the drum dots, um, are designed to, to be cleaned quite easily, so just with water and soap, so. So next up we have new and different heads. Um, there are various brands, as you know, Remo, Evans, <coughs> the best, Aquarian, um, who are the other ones? Code, uh, I got a Rue head in there, but that doesn't And Rue nice. heads, he's gonna edit that in nicely. So obviously you've got the Evans Dry, the new UV1 heads, 
Uh, Remo, you've got March in 77s, which are great heads, I have to say. You've got the Ambassadors, which is a staple among the Giants. At Remo, you've got the Reflectors, you've got the uh, the American Classics, etc., etc. There are a range of brands. How often should you change your heads? Let's put it this way, like, you know, some people say you should change your heads this often, da 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 But some of us don't have all the money in the world to be, to, to be changing our heads out of whim like that, you know what I'm saying? Do your research. Find out what heads make good combinations, the Rezo and the Bow, and go on from there. You'll more likely have to change the batter over time, but the Rezos can stay. When it comes to the snare, that depends on the rate at which you play, i.e. how many gigs you play, how far you go in. If you're a light hitter, but you're playing often, you might not have the same rate of decay headwise as if you're playing, I don't know, two gigs a week, and you know, you're in a position where you are hitting the crap out of them because you're the hardest hitting band in the land. There will be telltale signs, as in dents in the head, wear and tear on the actual head itself so the coating comes off. If you haven't got a coated head, you might just find that it's, it's just a lot thinner in the middle. There are telltale signs, depend, again, it depends on the brand really and the kind of model that you're using. But if you're near a shop or if you're around a shop, send them a photo via email, is it dead? Is it worth a change? Maybe they'll give you their expert advice. I know at Drum Shack they will and say, bang, you're probably due to a head change. Why should you care about drum tuning? As a kid, I was very much a geek. I would go to... <laughs> All of the drum shops, including Drum Shack, pick up all the magazines, because it was magazines back then. And I'll go in and say, what about that skin, you know, uh, catalog, can I pick that up, bang. Right now, we have the internet. Not only do we have the internet, we have very, very good demos that people put out. There is, for me, there is no right and wrong way to tune. If that helps you achieve your sound, then go for it. Going back to the subject of catalogs, the way I learned to initially tune was reading an interview with one of my favorite drummers. Um, his name is Nysan Stewart. I follow him on Instagram. He has no idea he's one of my favorite drummers, but because it was it was actually funny enough a symbol catalog. But they asked him how do you tune your drums, and they said he said basically when I tune the snare and the toms, tight at the bottom, and then loose at the top with the toms, and then you know, but you tighten it at the bottom quite quite firmly to get that tone. So I took that little a little paragraph and I live by that. So obviously with the snare, it varied. It was always tight at the bottom, so I can get a snare buzz, etc. Depending on what I was doing, depending on the gig, depending on the recording. Obviously when I moved to Drum Shack, um, I learned a lot from uh, Mark Law, who's the owner, about tuning. He has a different way of tuning. I always joke that's a white bad way of tuning, but <laughs> Wait, like he definitely does that with says like mid range. It's it's a very good way of getting a tone out. And funny enough, for some instances, I've actually used that same level of tuning. So sometimes he'll uh, he'll drop, uh, tighten up the bottom head, detune the lugs on either side of the snare wires, and then leave the others fairly tight. That brings out the bottom end, but also brings out the the buzz of the snare a bit more. And just <laughs> obviously doing the the opposite, you know, getting the tone, the right pitch, um, you know, when you're tuning one and you're tuning the other side, etc. There's different ways. Some people tune everything up and then leave one down. It's never really worked for me. Uh, I know it works, but it does. It just doesn't do me. Some people like to use the, the machines, the dial tunes, and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, the next thing that I'm about to talk about comes into play. Snare wires, I've actually got a range of snare wires here. When your drums are buzz, buzz sympathetic, um, it means they are more likely to buzz when you hit them. So if you have that low tone and you tune it down low and you want that buzz, you can choose snares with extra wires in them. The stag ones, I think it's 30, 42 strands on a 40 inch drum, that's a lot of strands. And then you have the Super 30, which is 30 strands. And then you have, um, the pure sound of this one right here is the equalizer. 
Now, the reason why this is interesting is that they've got one, two, three, four, five, six on one side, six on the other, and as you can see in the middle, there's nothing there. Why? Because it focuses on the snap, the initial attack, and no buzz afterwards. So I tend to have, I have actually got two of these. Uh, I've got one of them on a piccolo snare, and all their job is to do is bang out the way. These are SO 225s by Pearl. Uh, these are standard all round snare wires, they just do the job. So you've got the all round, you've got the more specialist ones, and there are loads in between. So it's, it's really about figuring out, first of all, what kind of music you play and what you feel works best for that. What kind of snare sound do you want? Okay, I want a dark snare sound, which means double ply, something like that, something like a hydraulic or something like that, I don't know. Uh, and then, but you want it fairly short. So then you're gonna offset that with maybe a thicker batter head. And then couple that with uh, uh, an equalizer which would shorten it even more. So it just it's all about attack. Instead of selling a snare drum, why not just augment it? Look after your snare. Change your head regularly, coated heads deteriorate quicker than you think, which is true. I know I said earlier that, you know, depending on the rate at which you play, your, your heads deteriorate or not. Just make sure you keep a track of them, really. Um, or put the right head on for the job so you won't have to change it too often. Also, if you value your instrument, you're gonna protect it. Either with a soft case or a hard case, obviously I know it depends on budget. Cases aren't exactly cheap, but say for instance, uh, they sell second hand cases at Drum Shack all the time both hard and soft cases. Look at look at your stair as an instrument in itself. A lot of the time, that's all you can bring to a to a gig, your breakables and your snare, you know, including your snare, should I say. So, you know, make sure that's protected properly. If you want to get the optimum sound out of it, you can trust that you can do that on the day, then you're going to do that. If you don't do that, then you're not serious. You shouldn't be here. If you're still here and you're not serious, then you know where the door is, isn't it? Okay, well, I hope this has been, been useful. I know there's been a lot of talking in this. I'm sorry, guys. Actually, I'm not sorry. This is information I'm passing to you, which is important. You know, like, subscribe, let us know what you think. Do you see bits where you can improve on, you know, tune in, uh, techniques, etc., etc. Uh, have a look at our website. We've got a load of dampening techniques, etc. on there. Come visit the shop. I'm not going to be here much longer, but the guys are there. Marco, Alex, Danny, Mark, Dylan, and whoever else is coming. And they'll be able to help you out. And I'm sure they'll give you the best service possible. Drum Shack Styley. That's really weird thing to say, isn't it? That's a really weird thing to say. But you know what? It's on there. It's on there for life. I'll check you guys later.